So today in the shop, we had another snowy day. As predicted, the snow fell all day. But we did get to do a project that we were waiting for a snowy day when we couldn't paint to do. And it turned out to be more successful than I really was anticipating. I got together a bunch of parts I wanted to do in the future to polish up. I have a new sprocket coming from Vlad. But I want to get the disc. This is the front disc that replaces the rear disc. I wanted to polish it up so that it would be a polished surface against the shiny black wheel. I showed how I used paint remover to do some of it, but unfortunately after the paint was already off, we found out, and I remembered well, it had a plating underneath it that had to be ground off. I showed how I did that, and using up the little Dremel tool and several of the wire wheels and drill press and various tools, got all of the, all of the, uh, the plating off and did a nice buffing on the buffing wheel. And when I was all done at the end of the day, I looked at it and I said, wow, I, I held it up against the black wheel, the shiny black wheel. And since this is a custom wheel video, that's part of our new custom wheel. Now who would have ever thought how unpredictable this winter has been? Yesterday we were painting Ducati parts. We wake up this morning, <laughs> gonna snow all day and into the night. Luckily, we checked in with some of our friends in Texas that are having even worse conditions than we are, and they're okay. And Ray Dory in uh, Louisiana is okay, and Ray in Florida is okay. So I, I don't know, maybe we should just cut our losses here. But it is a big snow coming day, and we got to get our parts in. They've dried in a garage overnight. When I'm looking at how nice these came out, oh, Joe, are you going to be happy? <laughs> yeah, they came out real nice. This was This was one of the... Yesterday, you can't believe, yesterday we were out there painting on a painting table, and today we're going to be using a snowblower half of the day. But we'll find something small to work on. We never want to let a day go. And I, But having this dry, in fact, I'll bring this down into the shop. It'll dry. It's, it's dry to the touch now. And it's absolutely a perfect, perfect color match. Joe, you're in. So once again, it's a totally no groundhog day. I've got to flip all the battery charges, chop the ice, feed the birds, drink some coffee, and decide how I want this day to play out. I do have some parts I want to polish downstairs. I want to work on that disc today. And there's, there's a lot of stuff. There's some really good news I just got from Vlad this morning, too, when I looked at his email. So our GS Evil Twin project. Now we have had, just to shorten this conversation up, this bike has been converted after about 25,000 miles to a 530 chain. In the 70,000 miles, 72,000, it's, it's, it's gone through several chains. And now it's got a chain that I want to keep just the way it is. I still have some miles left on the chain. But the sprocket, the rear sprocket, has an awful lot of miles on it. So what I wanted to do, my plan was, I called Vlad, and Vlad is going to find me. In fact, he already found it. It's being shipped. A, this is a 42 tooth, 5, 530 conversion from 630. He's got one with 40 teeth that'll put the bike more in an overdrive mode because what we do with this bike, usually if we take this bike, we go on a long ride and a lot of it is high speeds and what we want to do is just save wear and tear on the engine. And the point is, the other part is, I never ride with a passenger and they when they figure out the gearing on a bike, they figure it out that... that Possibly you're going to have a passenger. Well, I'm not ever going to have another passenger. That's it. My passenger days are over. But I want to prolong the life of that engine. An engine with 72,000 that doesn't burn oil. I want to keep it. I want to keep it running as long as possible. And the fact that Vlad found it, I really appreciate it. Thank you, Vlad. And that'll be coming in the next week or so. But in the meantime, and this is the point, there's a carrier in there. What I'll do is I'll take the carrier from the other bike and I can decide what I want to do with it and get it all cleaned up and ready that when a new sprocket gets here, I can just bolt it on and be ready to go. And this is the carrier with the 630 sprocket. Of course, we'll just take that off. Now, I'm trying to decide if I want to polish that part or clean it up, and I'll, I'll let that go for another day. i just bring that in the house before I can think about it. I want to replace the bolts, of course. Um, or at least in a minimum, just clean them up, and I'll be all set. I'm really happy the way that's going to, that'll be one extra part I can get done in the next couple days. 
And this is all the extra hardware. I could bring that down probably in the next couple of days. We'll have another snow in day. I can work on all that hardware. That'll be another job. Today I'm going to concentrate on the disc because that is a part we're going to need in the next couple of days. Okay, the batteries are all on charge and we're ready to start another day down in the shop. This will be a shop day for sure. No painting today. And you never know how every day is playing out. It, I'm glad we got that painting done because it looks like we're going to be shoveling a lot of snow today. They said six to eight inches. And it was just yesterday we were out here painting. <laughs> now, how good was it? How smart was it that we got all that painting done yesterday? Wow. Oh, it's good to be inside, have all our parts inside. And know that basically for the rest of the day we'll be down in a nice warm shop instead of out there until it's time to shovel. I have a feeling that's coming soon. So after an extra cup of coffee I've made a good plan for today. It sounds like I've made a good plan anyway. We'll find out. These parts are now under our hot air heating vent. And I thought I'd mount the tire and the curly, the curvy girl today, but you know what? I can give that an extra day of dry time. Now, it's simple why I want the dry time, because this paint is in a cycle of hardening up. I don't know exactly how long, but I know when you try to mount the tire on a, a rim that's been painted the day before, you tend to chew up the paint, even if you mount it without tools or with tools. It doesn't matter. So it's always good if you paint a wheel, let it sit. A couple extra days, it's in your favor. And one of the things I wanted to do now, we did this thing with Dallas, and again, thank you, Dallas. This disc is a normal standard rear disc. This one is a lot lighter. It's a spare front that we have. And I painted this years ago, so I'm going to try to take that paint off without gouging up the rim any more than I have to. Then I either, well, one of two things. I want to polish this. I thought the first choice would be to polish it because against the black wheel, that'll look real nice. And then that hub that I brought in, I'm thinking I either gonna, I'm either going to take the, the 630 sprocket off, paint it black, or polish it, or I have a day or so to figure that out. And I brought in all the little hardware. All these spacers have to be polished and cleaned up. That's, and, and thank you, Vlad, for getting that sprocket, because once you convert to 530, you, it's more difficult to get a sprocket that, that you want for that, and I don't know why. It is. Vlad does the homework for me. But this will be our project for today to get this cleaned up and run that little special pad that we have over here to restore the surface a little bit, get rid of any glaze that's on there. We've done that a million times before. It always works great. Oh my is that a perfect color match, Karen? Perfect match. I didn't expect it to match that well. Now, Karen is a trained artist and she's here observing. I think that's... I don't think it could get a lot better than which, that. Do you? Which one did you touch up? This one is painted from here up and from here down, but but it matches. You just can't even tell. What about the spots you were painting? And this one, the whole thing is painted, but we're waiting for the decals. So fabulous. Pretty good, huh? Excellent. Oh, uh, hey, I was real happy to hear that you you volunteered to shovel snow today, so I could work on motorcycles. Oh, yeah. yeah. How's that working out? <laughs> and whenever it snows, we feed the birds extra. In fact, they're costing me a fortune. And of course, whenever it snows, these birds get fed so much, I'm wondering if they can fly at the end of it. But they are so hungry in this weather, and we're always happy to feed them. Oh yeah, guys, come on over. Seeds are free. Okay, so the objective here is I have the disc. I want to remove the paint that's on there. And I guess the easiest way, I'm going to try to get some of it off with some paint remover, number one. Well, the, what would be the reason for that? Because I could go over to the grindstone and just grind it off with a wire wheel. But then it leaves a lot of scratches. And since this is a steel part, polishing out the scratches is a lot more work than polishing them out with aluminum. So the idea would be to get the paint off as, as conveniently as possible. Now, I don't know in this case how that's going to play out until I actually, this is Jasco premium paint remover. The idea is to put it on once and don't go back over it. This will get some of it off, all of it off, none of it off. We don't know because everything with paint is uh, is mystery, is a mystery to me. But anyway, 
Always wear super big dishwashing gloves. Don't get this on your hands. And we'll just let this sit. We'll go have another cup of coffee. Hang out with Karen, whatever. And then we'll see whatever doesn't come off, we're gonna to have to take off mechanically. And that is two ways to remove paint. You can do it chemically, which is what I'm doing right now, or you can do it mechanically. Mechanically means you can take sandpaper, steel, wool, a grindstone, a brick, anything that'll just physically shave it off, like a machine shop almost. Now, I don't know because I put this paint on, so I'm going in around the spokes. But what we're going to have to do is get it all, get all of the paint off before I try to polish it, and then see what's going to be the most convenient way to polish it. Again, a job like this, this can just, you know, just take a lot of time. But in the end result, and I've looked at that, that rendition that John made up of the, uh, of the bike with the black wheels and I'm trying to think about if this is going to, I don't want to have a black wheel and a black sprocket. I believe, I don't know if I'm going to do that on the, the sprocket carrier. I don't know. Anyway, the thing is I'll let this sit a few minutes and see if it takes it off. If it doesn't, then we go to plan B. All right, so a few minutes have gone by. I've got an ordinary paint spatula scraper whatever you want to call it and it looks like that's loosening up the paint pretty well it's only a matter of time now that that's going to come off at least I know that 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 paint remover is going to work against that paint that we have on there so we'll just let this sit another minute or so and I'll start taking it off yeah now see because it's painted black underneath you can't really tell that factory paint is probably baked on uh, some kind of nuclear weapon paint or something that's not going to come off that easily, but the stuff I put on, yeah, well, we'll see. We'll figure it out. It's just going to take time. Now, what I have is ordinary steel wool. Let's see. Yeah, that seems to take some of it off. Then the more of it I can get off this way, it's just less grinding for me later. So it looks like the paint stripper has taken most of the paint off, but there's the, the this that isn't paint underneath it. That looks like plating. It maybe I don't know what kind of plating, something that they put on steel. If it's steel, they didn't anodize it. It's not anodizing, but most of this is coming off. You can see it's coming off now. It's nice and soft. So this is a question of going around, just like I'm doing right now, getting off all the paint because this will just make. The job a lot easier when you go over to something to a wire wheel with something with a lot of paint on it what usually happens you clog up the wire wheel you make a mess it takes four times as long this way if you can get the, the heavy paint off even painting a gas tank this is the, much preferable to just sanding away grinding away or whatever and the less scratches i can put on it i know because i polished up the set of discs that's on the front of the GS now. Polishing those discs up is a big job because it's steel. Aluminum polishes up real quick. Steel, a mm, little more effort. But we got the whole day basically to devote to this project. And it's still snowing away. There's just, there's no escape from the snow. That's for sure. See, it's coming off right now. So this will make the job a whole lot easier when we go over to the wire wheel. And the idea is not to, not to put big gouges and scratches in everything, if possible. Now you can see in a close-up what I'm talking about. See, that, that's a plating. That's not paint. Up here, this is paint. See, that comes right off. So getting that off, getting most of that off if I can before I go over to the wire wheel, I would just carefully, carefully get as much of this off as I can because it's going to mean a lot less time over at the wheel. And certainly a lot less time polishing if I don't have any deep scratches I have to get out. And polishing steel is a lot more work than aluminum. That's that's something right away you figure that out right away the first time you polish something that's hard steel. Now the next thing is going to be to go over to the wire wheel and see how much of this we can get off with the wire wheel. And I don't know how much is going to come off. That's that remains to be seen, but then the rest of it will have to do with a Dremel tool or by hand. Or, but, but we can still get this plating off. See, that's some kind of plating. 
and I don't, it's not anodizing because this is not aluminum and this is this I think is stainless steel but this is old technology discs these are not floating discs so I want to recondition that surface with this soft pad and get this polished up if I can that'll make a nice little addition to our wheel project now on the wire wheel this is always labor intensive and it just goes as fast as you can go but it, when you're done you realize you just spent half an hour at the wheel but it does remove that plating it does it very slowly that plating I don't know what exactly it is but it is very difficult to remove even with a, a wire wheel it takes a lot of work a rough grinding wheel gets a lot of it off but the, a lot of this stuff I got to get off it's a lot easier to get it off at the drill press with one of those soft pads that'll take a lot more of it off and then getting out in the corners here a lot of times you got to do that by hand but we will get all of that plating removed before we polish it and try if you, you could do put this 180 grit sandpaper in the machine I'll take it right off but then you leave scratches and you got forever at the buffing wheel a hair and fast forward of course it, it just takes time. There's a lot of little corners and angles and edges in these spokes. This is the soft pad available from Harbor Freight, of course. All of these different tools are useful in doing part of this job. You need a variety of tools. So I'm not sure if you can see, this cleans up. I got all the spokes cleaned up now. Now, I can't do this in a drill press because it doesn't really fit in. I've got to do this with an electric drill on the workbench, otherwise the, the, the post from the drill press stops that but then but the spokes are ready a rough cleaned up the next part with the soft pad be right in there and then we'll the rest of this I think we're gonna have to do a lot of it by hand or with the Dremel tool and then once this is all removed we'll be able to polish it go over to the buffing wheel and see how that was stainless steel once you polish stainless steel it usually stays polished pretty much for a long time put a little flitz on it it'll be good for a, six months a year a fast forward with the handheld drill. It's just a matter of time. All of this stuff is just labor intensive. Now it looks like we have most of the plating off, if not all of it. And now we can go over and we can see how this is going to polish up. But you're never going to polish the plating. It's not even worth trying. The plating is not going to polish up. It's only when you get down to raw stainless steel that you'll be able to polish it up. Now the next step is to try to clean up any edges here. And I have these various things that I bought off Amazon for the Dremel tool. And our really inexpensive <laughs> Dremel tool from Harbor Freight. And we'll see which one of these just I want to just get in there and clean that up as much as I can and then we'll be ready to go to the buffing wheel now and fast forward again makes this look uh, relatively easy but again in real time it takes time so after experiment for a while it seems like the green pads do the best at cleaning up and, and getting a scratch free surf a minimum scratch surface that we can use on the buffing wheel so I'm going to go over the whole part again except for the part where the brake pads rub with the green pad before I go over to the uh, debuffing wheel. See how that plays out. Ever since I got that little Dremel tool and all those little attachments that you see in the tub from, from uh, Amazon, wow, uh, have I found uses for it. And today, that thing really was useful in doing the little angles and edges on this part. Very useful. Well, that's about as much of the material as I can get off and I want to just try to get this part of it buffed with the buffing wheel make that a little bit shinier we, this part really came out good and needless to say I did the back too and why did I do the back because the gods see everywhere they really do and so so do people that watch this video and one final thing I thought I'd try on this this is a, a a buffing ball I bought for doing Vince's wheels years ago. He had snowflake wheels and we never did the wheels but I have the tool and so that might work. I'm going to just run that over that before I go to the buffing wheel. That's, that's a mild like a 3M pad. It may just anything we could do to smooth that out. It'll just make the buffing part of it will save time on a buffer. 
Uh, thank God for uh, for fast forward, or this would wind up being a 10-hour video. I actually spent the whole day to do these parts, and uh, the only thing I had to do beside this today is keep the sidewalk clean. Well, that certainly did smooth it out and clean it up just a little bit, but of course the, the final thing is going to be on a buffing wheel. We'll start with the black compound and work through the red and into the white compound. Even though we're not, we probably could use any one of them on this. It's stainless steel. And the nice thing about stainless steel, these parts never rust. They oxidize very gradually, but they repolish up very quickly. So it's a nice, a nice combination. But the, the reality is this is old technology that because they're not floating discs, it's a problem. Now, if you replace your disc with EBC discs, they're floating. But they cost half the price of a bike. Now just some basic information, the black compound is usually, almost always, the roughest. The red, the rouge is the medium, and then you finish the part with white. Now if in a perfect world you'd have three separate buffet wheels and never contaminate, but what will happen is in our case we only, we only need the one buffet wheel, and I just rake the buffet wheel between compounds. And what will happen, it, this is going to be a very time consuming thing, we'll get as much of that cleaned up as we can. And that's, that's basically going to be the upgrade that we want to do on a motorcycle because I want to see that up against a black wheel that's shiny. I think that's really going to be nice. And again, these are small upgrades. We'll personalize a motorcycle and they make the motorcycle ultimately easier to maintain. And if you have a flat black part wiping brake dust off, what a mess. This, once it's polished, that'll be a lot less maintenance. And the whole purpose of everything we do is just to minimize the time at the buffer wheel. Because basically, you don't see it in the video, but this is, this is a lot of time condensed down because of fast forward. And in reality, this, this took quite a bit of time. And there's a lot of effort and time with using a buffer wheel. Your arms get tired, number one. And it, you're breathing in all that dust and grit. So I try to minimize, everything is designed to minimize the time you have to spend actually right there where I am now at the bottom. After all of that, and it just, after a quick cleanup, I'm not sure you can see how that's going to look, but I think that's going to look absolutely gorgeous against that shiny black wheel when it's all assembled. And we'll be ready to assemble that in the next couple of days. At, this was a day well spent. I really think that adds a nice little touch and it'll definitely make maintaining the motorcycle a lot easier. Now, as it is with every day, I try to get something productive, another part of this project done. And right now, I just, I, I got to go shovel snow is what I got to do. But I think that's one more part that, hey, that'll just look so nice up against that black wheel. I clean all the residue off of that and we are ready. Now, in the next couple days, I don't know where the snow is going. I'm sure we're going to be landlocked here for a couple more days. So what I thought would be appropriate, I'll get some more parts polished. And what has to happen, Joe's parts have to sit up by a heating vent before we do anything. But even that, we can't do anything until the kangaroo delivers the, the decals. So, uh, and our wheel, ah, I, I can't, I, in real life, that wheel looks so good you want to take a bite out of it. Anyway. We got the curvy girls, we got all these other things ready to go. What we're really waiting for is the decals, and we'll be ready to move on with the, that project. This project, we have more parts to polish on the back wheel, and I wanted to finish the back wheel before I start the front wheel. But you know, it looks like we're going to be snowed in until July, so what can I do? I don't want to ever end the video without thanking the healthcare workers. You guys are just fabulous. Thank you so much for keeping my family safe, keeping me safe allowing me the time and being healthy enough to do this kind of work. This really floats my boat. I get a lot of satisfaction out of restoring these older motorcycles. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you're out polishing something and have your bike up on a lift and find something you can clean and polish. Having polished parts makes a bike a lot easier to maintain. That's for sure. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video and thank you so much for watching. So after a long hard day in the shop, what do we have for dinner here? Whoa, that looks good.
Chicken enchiladas. Chicken enchiladas. Mmm, my favorite. Mmm. Makes me want to work even harder tomorrow and or buy another motorcycle. <laughs> Not really, huh? Not happening. <laughs> Not happening. Uh, thank you, Karen, so much. Thank you so much. I can't even express my gratitude for the food I've been eating lately. <laughs> and it shows every time I tighten my belt. Anyway, these are photos from 2010. These are 11 years ago. We were up on Perkins. It looks like most of these photos from this little file come from Perkins. 11 years ago, and boy, I, I'm trying to remember who owned which bike and which guys we were interacting with and which bike Luciano was riding and various people. But boy, we missed out on a whole season of going to Perkins. Now, somebody who's not from our area, Perkins is part of the Bear Mountain area, part of Harriman Park, and it's where the bikes hang out. Hundreds and hundreds of bikes every weekend, every riding day, really. And that's the tower at the top, and hey, for whatever. We we miss these days. They've been closed for the whole time that COVID has been around. And what would happen before COVID, we would see some new bikes we had never seen every weekend. There'd be new people and everybody be harassing each other who did what and who's got the fastest bike and who has the slowest bike and hop up up. Who spent the most money on stuff that doesn't matter. It was always so much fun. It was really a ton of fun. And actually, Perkins is where I met Luciano. So, I mean, a lot of good things come. Well, you never know. That's the beauty of it. And, and for me, the beauty is I would get ideas of what I wanted to do to my bike. And a lot of times I'd see something and I'd say, there's something I never want to do. So it was some of everything. But that was back, my God, that's over 10 years ago. It's just unbelievable to think how, how the time just goes under the bridge and time passes you by. And you look around, some of your friends are gone and some are not riding anymore. Some have got too old and none of them have gotten too young, though, that's for sure. Anyway, there is a there is a point to all this. The point that I'm making is throughout life, and here's somebody sitting on my R1. Throughout life, there's always part of these adventures you can't predict. And, and then there's the things like my GS that are just there forever. They're staples. They never go away. That bike has been with me since 1982. I'm having fun making the wheels and more spare parts. And I hope you enjoy the videos and share them with your friends as we fade to black. Thank you so much for watching.